Welcome to today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light. Sun, Salt, and Light, S-O-N, knowing and growing in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ, but also being the salt and the light in your marriage, in your family, at your place of work, at your church, and even in the community you're in. I'm Pastor Michael Petit. This is a radio ministry of our church, Calvary Chapel Divine, here in Divine, Texas. We are so glad that you joined us for today's broadcast. We are a Calvary Chapel, so we simply teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We believe that God uses His Word to transform, restore, and to change lives one verse at a time. If you're visiting our area, you'd like to get information about our church or church service times, maybe even track down some of the other teachings that we have available through podcasts, whether it's through Audible or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can do all of that at our church website at calvarydivine.org. That's calvarydivine.org. And then I thought to myself as I was listening to Alan Jackson, I was like, well, what is the opposite of Apollos? This is the pastor brain in me. And I was like, well, what is the opposite of Apollos? Turn to Luke chapter 15. Luke 15, verse 25. Now, you know that story probably very very well, but not the other half of it. You know the prodigal. But Luke 15, verse 25 says, Now his older son was in the field, And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed a fattened calf because he had received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and, 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 and treated him. But he answered his father, Look, these many years I have served you. I've never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours comes who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed a fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me. And at all that is mine is yours it was fitting to celebrate and to be glad for this brother was dead and is alive he was lost and he is found see divine grace and grace when we think about it you should celebrate when somebody comes to faith you should celebrate when somebody repents and turns back to god This is a teachable moment for this young man, even though this is a a, a parable, right? That person doesn't exist, but think about that just for a second. The brother, who is very legalistic, is not willing to go inside to the party and celebrate. And I wonder how many Christians are either Apollos, where you're teachable, and, and even though you're eloquent and you, you know a lot of stuff and you're, you're still willing to learn. And then instead of getting fired up and upset, what do you do? You're like, hey, I'm fervent in the spirit and I'm going to get even, man, I'm going to get white hot now. And God, because I have the whole story and now I'm going to go help with that church they planted. Right? Are you going to be like the prodigal? the brother, where you're angry and you're in sin. If you're angry at your brother or at your father, right, you're in sin. And so we we see God's grace and the benefit of grace because God forgives sinners. And who, who has to say over that and how that happens? God does, not Christians. Not Christians. And so when we look at that word grace, it's important for us to understand there should be joy and you should be thankful of it because you've received it. 
But does this, when you read that, does that brother sound joyful? No. Not at all. What does Apollos do? Apollos is like, thank you for telling me. Off to the ministry I go. And he continues it. And that's what we need. Is like when we come down to understanding grace, it's understanding that that grace takes us uh, takes us rise far back in the heart of God, and in the awful and incomprehensible abyss of His holy being. You have to understand, like just reading the whole reason why I read that scripture and and Revelation is because you need to understand, like you have you don't belong there. Neither do I. But it's by grace and the work that was done on the cross by Jesus Christ. And so we need to be able to show grace and mercy more. Right? Especially in the environment we're in, in the community that we're in. Can we show it? Somebody comes up to me and says, man, I want to tell you about Trump. Or I want to tell you about Kamala. I'm going to say, you know what? Let me tell you about Jesus. Because that's more important. It is. All right? Man, I am a pastor that will tell you all day long, you have to vote. You have to. If you want to continue to keep worshiping freely, this election is very important. Period. If you want to see babies be killed all the way up until birth, as they have eight of them been killed in Minnesota, this election is very important. They refuse to provide the care for those eight children that were born on the birthing table as the abortion was being done and they died. But I'm trusting Jesus. And and so as hard as that is, man, it's like I gotta show grace and mercy because a lot of these people are lost. On both sides. Let's be real. They put so much in, in both candidates. And and they need Jesus. In John chapter 1, verse 17, it says, For the law was given through Moses, and this is important for you to get, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth. Now there's a lot more that we could cover in grace, but we won't be able to spend any more time because we've got to get through love. But I'll read this one thing, and this is, uh, the author is unknown. It says, Amazing grace, not cheap, but free, sufficient to save a wretch like me the first day, and then every day for the rest of my life. It's not just the day that you came to faith. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. That's why Paul tells Timothy, you then my child, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, be strengthened by what? Grace. Be strengthened by grace that is in who? Christ Jesus. And that's what we need to be praying for each other, that we would be strengthened by grace and be able to convey that to each other and extend that to each other. Right? Right? The love of God is the other attribute that's there. And I'll just read 1 Corinthians 13, 13. It says, So now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. That whole chapter you read, you know, that's the wedding verses that everybody uses. But they always forget the first two parts of the verse in the very beginning. Like you can be a noisy clang and a... If there's no love in what you do, even when you serve God, you're just a noisy clang. Right? You ever try to you ever try to have a conversation and the kids just screaming? And you're still trying to have the conversation on? That's kind of what it is. There's no love. 
Nobody's hearing you. And so the love of God is and the reason why we won't need faith and hope anymore. We're in heaven. But love will continue. You'll continue to love. And you'll be able to do it perfectly because you'll be no longer in sin because you'll be glorification. You'll be in heaven. That person that you go, man, it's hard to love that person. You'll be able to love them in heaven. Right? We all have them. So I'm not the only, uh, come on now, somebody, I know somebody had one come in their brain, right? And, and you already knew the name, right? God bless, man. I mean, we all have them. But you'll be able to love them perfectly in heaven. Now, if it was mom or, you know, or, hey, come on. It's, that's Sometimes you have family members that are hard. It can be friends. It can be somebody that hurts you deeply. But you'll be able to love them perfectly in heaven. If they repented and came to faith. So you need to remember that. It's like love will continue. The Apostle John said this, that God is love. And 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 12 said, Beloved, let us love one another, for the love for love is from God. And whoever loves have been born of God and knows God. And he's talking about agape love. That's that sacrificial love. And anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. And in this love of God was made manifest among us that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. So how do we learn to love? By Jesus. It's not that fourth grade. Oh, I love you forever. Right? <laughs> Teachers love it. And then the next day, oh, I love you forever, right? It's, it is what it is. But it's, you know, when we think about it, we learn to love because of Christ. That's the type of love he's talking about. You want to learn, know what love is, you, you need, and this is why your relationship with him is so important. That's how you learn, how you, you learn to extend grace and mercy when you go, Man, you don't deserve mercy. I deserve justice, but I'm going to extend mercy. I'm going to, uh, man, the grace of God, I'm just going to pray that over you. You know, that God will use that and, and, and we can get back to a good relationship at some point, right? But we learn to love the way that Christ loved. Now, you go in and verse 10, it says, In this love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. He took our sins on Him. Beloved, God, if God loved us, we also ought to love one another. And no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love is perfected in us. It's like they know us by our love. Now, you'll hear it said all the time, and this is unfortunately religious philosophy where they you know god is love so you're supposed to love me how i am uh, no well, what's the other one hate the sin but love the sinner no i must tell you no on both of them because that's bad theology and and i'll tell you why psalm 5 verse 5 says this the boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. So I can tell you God is love. God is love to those who believe he's God. Right? God is love. If you're following him, God is love. But if you're not following him, you're an enemy to him. You're following the prince and the power of the air. That's what it tells us back in Ephesians. And another verse we have is Psalm 11, verse 5. The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. So at what point do you think you live in a transgender or homosexual lifestyle that, oh, God loves me the way I am? No, he does not. He hates the wicked. He hated me when I was wicked.
It's all sin. But see, what we try to do is we're trying to adapt it into making it okay for us to live the lifestyle. Another verse we have is in Malachi chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. I have loved you, says the Lord, but you say, how have you loved us? Is not Esau Jacob's brother, declares the Lord? Yet I have loved Jacob, but Esau I hated. Esau is a representation of the world and sin. And I have laid waste his hill country and left his heritage to jackals of the desert. And that doesn't sound too much loving, right? God doesn't need you to be his PR rep. You just give them scripture. And if they have an issue with it, they can take it up with God. Okay? I'm serious. He doesn't need you to do his marketing. And, and so when we say, you know, God hates this particular, you know, these, God hates these particular sinners or God hates this particular groups and God's never called us to go out and do that stuff and hold up signs and do that. We're called to share the gospel. And, and, and that means having a, a clear understanding that the, the sinner, uh, you know, when we talk about sin and we talk about, you know, being a sinner, it's, it's you know, understanding that God, God wants a relationship with each one of us, but the, the smallest sin. See, that sin is so open and so out there. But the smallest sin, and they're all big sins to God, can't be in front of a holy God. That's why I read you Revelation 5. No sin at all can be. I think that verse, when we think about, or when we think about just, you know, hate the sin but love the sinner, but when we think about that, it's like we got to understand at the end of the day, it's like God hates sin. And he wants to have a, a loving relationship with you, but that requires repentance. And for you to turn to him. So we're, we have to understand, like, your sin in front of a holy God, that's understanding that wrath is what should come next. But because of his mercy, it hasn't. And so we have to be very careful not to slip into these type of statements. Because we're not doing them a favor. By saying, oh yeah, yeah. No. They need to understand the truth of, of, of Christ and what Christ did on the cross and and, and that's the thing they need to understand because in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says, but God shows His love for us. And while that we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He shows His love by going to the cross. Now what you do with that love is up to you. So just make sure you get that. Because yes, God is love. And it is one of his attributes. But we just need to be very careful because I think what happens is when we think about uh, God is self-existence, his love is... I, I love what A.W. Tozer says, God is self-existence, his love has no beginning because he's eternal. His love can have no end because he's infinite. And it has no limit because he is holy. It's quintessence of all spotless purity because he is eminence. His love is incomprehensible, vast, vital in the shoreless sea before which we kneel in joyful silence and from which the loftiest eloquence retreats confused and abashed. And yet if we would know God for others' sake, tell what we know, we must try to speak of his love. 
That's the love you speak of. He loved you enough to go to the cross and die for you. But he did not love you to stay in that sin. And those are hard conversations. And those are going to be conversations that are going to happen a lot more. Because this generation that's coming up, this younger generation, is being told they can be whatever they want. A generation that's coming up that can't even, you know, kids that are seven, eight years old that can't even clean the room or brush their teeth, yet they can choose a gender. Imagine the confusion they're going to have as they come up. And they're going to look at the church as being like a hate group, and we're not. We want, to, want you to be here. We want you to be able to come and worship and be with God and hopefully at one time to follow God and repent. But that's... That's still your choice. That's the free will that we have. To think He loves you enough to give you free will. In Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40, the Shema is one that we should remember. It's, it's, it's when the Pharisees are asking, you know, what what is the... Um, Testing them one question is they they're like what is the the great commandment in the law? What is the greatest commandment, right? And in Matthew chapter 22 verse 37 and Jesus said to him you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul And with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment It's love It's loving God And and to love anyone it requires it requires some type of effort as far as to learn who he is. Right? Or You can't just go home and be married and not know anything about your spouse. Right? You should know, like, some things about your spouse because the relationship will be stronger. Right? You should know, like, if you can look and go, yeah, we need to leave. <laughs> She's done. <laughs> It's, it's time to go. And I'll, it's like you know. It's just a look. Because you, you have a loving relationship. You, you know her. Intimately. And you should know him intimately. And so that's why he, he says. Like you, you don't want to be drifting in and out of love. And you don't want to lose your first love. He is your first I was going to do the, the Barry White, his, your last, your everything. No. Um, but he is your first, above all. Above your, your spouse, above your kids, above the church. You are to place him first in your individual relationship. Because if that's first, everything else works itself out. And what happens sometimes is we'll put the marriage in front of him. Are the kids in front of him? Are our jobs in front of him? And he's not in the rightful place. If you're to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, that requires a lot, right? That requires you to be, that should be your first love. And it, and it should be, you know, it, it, Unfortunately, the world will shape our influences and, and we need not to allow the world so much to do that. And, and we can, you know, I saw a video this past week of grown men crying at a Deadpool Wolverine movie because he put the mask on. And I was like, I felt like just walking in the theater and start spanking these grown, like they, like, wake up, guys. The world is falling around apart. Like, the world is falling around us. And you're supposed to be men. And you're over here crying because he put on a, a mask? 
And, and I just think, I keep thinking like, you have, you have a relationship with an imaginary figure. Sad that you put that much into it. But we'll do the same thing with Instagram or TikTok or some other form of entertainment. And it's like you're supposed to be staring into the perfect law of liberty. Because he tells you with all your heart. And and you go, well, it's you think about it in Ezekiel 36, verse 26, it says, and I will give you a new heart. Well, I can't do it. No, you can. You've been given a new heart and a new spirit. And I will put it within you and I will remove your heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. He's like, I will give you a new spirit. You'll become a new creation. Walk with me. Commune with me daily. Don't lose your first love. And it's important just for us to think about that. I mean, it's... It, it, uh, but at the same time, we're supposed to love God and what's the other one? Love people. Well, I don't like people. I don't like being around. Like, what's up with that? Like, you're a, you're a Christian. You're supposed to be sharing the gospel. Now people get on my nerves. I'm like, oh Lord. Because the rest of the verse is love your neighbor as your right? You're supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. That's the second commandment, right? After you love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. It's like it's all love. And it's all sacrificial. And and then it it's I've told y'all this in the past. It's like you go, I, I, I have a hard time being around my spouse. Well, guess what? You're supposed to love her as Christ loved the church. Don't want to hear it. Right? It's not based on your feelings and emotions. If you're his child, in John 13, 34, verse 35, it says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By, by this, all will know that you are my disciples if you love, if you have love for one another. You're supposed to love your friends. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no love than this, than to lay down one's life for his friend. But what if your friend hurt you? And they now are your mortal enemy, right? Well, you don't get out of that one either. Luke chapter 6, verse 35, but love your enemies. Do good and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for He is the kind to the unthankful and evil. For he is kind to the unthankful and unevil with the hope that they return back to Christ. That's your prayer. It's not saying that you've got to go make uh, you have to make it all about spending time with that person. 1 John 4 eight says, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So we can't get away from it. Grace and love. Well, that concludes today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light Radio. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to submit a prayer request or get in contact with us to find out service times, you can do all of that at our website, uh, as well as get uh, our podcast at Spotify, Audible, TuneIn Radio, pretty much wherever you can find a podcast. Uh, you, you can just type in Sun, Salt, and Light, and you'll find it. 